Hi, and welcome to Art a la Carte. Today we're going to take an illustration from one of my favorite books and bring it to life. I am a big fan of Alice in Wonderland, and one of my favorite characters from the book is the Cheshire Cat. So the first thing we do when you want to illustrate um, a character or do any kind of illustration or drawing is good to make a thumbnail sketch. That's just a really quick sketch that you can kind of um, jot down the composition and what you want the picture to look like. Now, just a minor note, it is really, really hot in my studio and so I have the door open or the window open and so occasionally you're going to hear cars driving past. That's just what's going to happen in this video because it is stinking hot, it's the middle of July. And yes, I know I live on the Oregon coast, and you people who actually get hot weather will laugh at us, but when it gets up, you know, in mid-70s, it's just way too hot for me. <laughs> I'm such a wimp. So, ah, see, there's a motorcycle. Ah, anyway, let's get on with our drawing. So looking back at our original sketch here, I'm going to go ahead and lightly, with my 2B pencil, I'm going to lightly sketch this sketch onto my big paper here. my sketch lightly roughed out and I'm going to go ahead and back in and add just a few details to kind of break it in. So I'm going to cut actually his face in half and right above that line because actually I want this half line to be his top, the bottom part of his top lip. So right above there I'm going to put the triangle for his, his nose and I'm going to bring that down with the cat lip. And then I'm going to weave this up into a grin. And the effect I'm looking for in this shape is kind of almost like one of those half moons. And then I'm going to bring this down. The grin on the Cheshire Cat is kind of the iconic symbol of the Cheshire Cat. So you definitely don't want to go too small with the grin. Now with his eyes, I want to give him pretty but mischievous. So I guess they would be pretty mischievous. <laughs> so I'm going to bring the upper eyelid, or the bottom eyelid, up just slightly and then curve it cat-like. And then I'm going to round the top up. The reason I brought the bottom lid of his eye up a little bit is that when a person laughs, usually the cheek muscles will push the bottom lid up just slightly so it gives it more of a grin. And I want to really express that grin in his face. block in his actual teeth. So I'm going to bring down a dot there and a dot there and bring those two lines together. Those are his front teeth. And then I'm going to also bring, and I'm not going to start from the very tip corners, I'm going to kind of start back here. And bring that around. And there's where his two teeth meet. However long it takes you to get your picture to where you like it, take that extra time. It's going to really reward you in the end. Um, if there's something that you don't like about it and you continue on and you work on your picture and you don't fix that problem and you move on to a place where you can't go back and fix it after you like add color or paint or whatever, that part's always going to bother you. So make sure that you have it where you like it first. So for the next, I'm just going to look at the rest of the picture and kind of tighten this all in before I move into the inking process. All right, so there our treasure cat is looking really creepy. Every once in a while, I draw a creepy picture. All right, I'm going to start inking him in, and I'm going to use my. Um, uh, Sakura Microns, and I have a size 01 and a size 02, and ink this in.
Cheshire Cat is all inked in and ready for the next step. So you're going to let this dry. Um, usually it doesn't take very long for the inks to dry, but there's nothing worse than taking your gummy eraser and erasing over something and it's not dry and you smear your ink. So if uh, you've just finished inking an area, save that part for last and erase the parts that you first inked in or give it a few minutes to dry and then go ahead and erase it. He is inked in, he's erased, it's time to start adding some color and work with him. So for this next step, I'm going to lay in my base color. Um, I'm going to use watercolor, you can use acrylic or color pencils, markers, whatever you want. I'm going to use um, watercolor paint. Okay, so I've added in some base colors to the Cheshire Cat using watercolors and I kept it really light except for down here I really want to push this back so I used a really thick dark black watercolor that I have. I'm going to do the same thing up here but I'm going to put the leaves in first before I add in the black so I thought I would time lapse the leaves in. So I've let this dry and the leaves are ready to go. They're not going to bleed into my black. So I'm going to take my black and I'm going to get it kind of watery. And I'm going to start down here. Love the cars. <laughs> I'm going to start down here and I don't want to get too close. I don't want to lose those wisps of hair. not applying a lot of pressure on my brush. That's how I'm able to kind of just drag the paint. So now that everything has um, dried, I'm going to start using my Prismacolor markers to begin adding in some details of shadowing and texture and highlighting with these. him all shaded in or colored in with a stripe. So I'm going to use this black grape and the key thing about using Prismacolors is that you keep them sharp very lightly because you can always go back and get darker if you need to. It's really hard to lighten up once you've applied a dark color pencil. And a fun thing about shading is shading or adding something dark to something pushes something back. So that's the reason I gave it such a black background because it really pushes this area out and pushes this forward. So your highlighted things are going to bring things forward and your shadowed things are going to push things back. So right here the tail and the his chest are the same tone so there's not a very big dimension there. So I'm going to add a little bit of shading here and in just a few little strikes with my color pencil, you're going to notice that now the tail is going to, is going to start to come forward 
and it's going to push this part of the cat back. So we're starting to see our shading coming in. Now, the thing people have is they get afraid of adding too much shading, and you really don't be afraid of adding too. At least I can't be afraid of that because sometimes I'm afraid to get dark in my color. I love it when I do, but I, I tend to not. You want to keep your contrast. You don't want the whole thing to be dark, but you want your darks to be nice and dark. And you want your lights to be nice and bright. And I'm going to start now blending the shading out a little bit with this magenta. lightly with my pencil. I'm just going to add some texture in here. And this is just going to make it look as if there's actually fur or some sort of motion in here instead of just flat. This is where you get to start having some fun creating your character. Just to give that difference ooh, pop of something. <laughs> I'm going to go in and fill in the gums. Then I'm going to take a really light cream color. I have this cream. <laughs> I'm actually going to just add a little color to his teeth. Because no one actually has pure white teeth. If they do, they're fake. We're just going to put just a little bit of, pure, of cream into his teeth. That'll add just enough color. I'm going to color in the actually the whites of his eyes. yellow cat eyes. I have this spring green and I'm going to actually color in the irises of one eye and then I'm going to get this orange and color in the iris of his other eye. There, he's got his little face. All right, claws. I'm gonna color them in a nice bright magenta, just so they kind of stand out a little bit. I don't want to go blood red. That just seems a little gruesome. I'm not going for that, Alice, <laughs> in Wonderland. Our Cheshire cat is looking pretty cool and awesome. So I'm going to finish this up by adding some more shading and highlight and then I'm going to come back and show you the finished piece. So here is our finished Cheshire Cat picture. Um, I know I didn't take you through every single step, but I didn't take you through the coloring of the trees or the leaves because that is like several tutorials in themselves and I thought this is going to be a you know, three hour long video so but you kind of see how you can set up character designs starting off with your character sketch and if there's a character from a book that you would like to see my interpretation of that character um, message me and if I know who that character is <laughs> I know there's a lot of books out there I haven't read but if I know who it is um, you might just see a video on how to draw that character so if you're a fan of Alice in Wonderland, just like I am, check out my Etsy shop for some fun Alice in Wonderland themed items. I will have different keychains in stock, the 
drink me potions, um, just lots of fun things um, to check out. I even have this painting and some different products made from this painting there at Etsy, so check it out. I'll put the link to the Etsy shop in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to keep drawing, and as always, God bless. Bye-bye.